White Room Syndrome is one way we talk about a significant lack of description, often a lack of setting description. As the author, we've usually got a good sense of what's going on, but that doesn't always materialize on the page for our readers. They don't know everything that we do, after all. And without proper context of where events are happening, it can be as though the story's taking place in a blank white room. There's a lot of ways to approach this problem, so I've invited my friend Brett to help out. He's a self-published author with a real knack for immersing you in a big world. White room syndrome has been one of the most challenging things for me to overcome as a writer. Let's see if we can give you some tips on how to make your setting shine. A lack of description isn't a major issue, but sometimes it can hold a story back. If a reader can't imagine where characters are, you're missing out on a ton of opportunities to subtly show how they exist and interact in a setting. Arguments take on a different tone if the speakers are seated in a church, floating around space, or on the phone in a street race. Being conscious of the characters involved and showing how they're interacting with the setting can really elevate what's happening in the plot. I think Martin does this well in A Song of Ice and Fire. He'll often give his characters something to tinker with while they talk, like food or a sword. We see something similar in Babel as well. Robin's demeanor changes if he's at home around his guardian, Professor Lovell, or with his friends at Oxford or with his guardian at Oxford. That context is really important. But of course, that's easier said than done. You can practice writing descriptions, and reading other authors' work to see how they handle description can be a big help. But not everyone pictures things the same way. And for those with aphantasia, picturing images in their head is near impossible. I have a lot of trouble imagining what characters or people look like based on written descriptions. Suspect is a short man with mousy hair and thick glasses. It's no wonder they never catch anybody with these things. Really, it's hard to imagine anything if it's not already in front of me. When I'm reading a book, usually some part of the description will remind me of something I've seen in visual media, and my brain will just slot that image in to fill the gap. For example, when I was reading Pride and Prejudice in high school, Naruto was coming out in the US, and I don't know what, but something about the description of Mr. Darcy made me think of Gara of the Desert. So that's who he was in my mind. And not Gara in Regency costume either. The gourd, the eyeshadow, everything. I didn't realize this was a problem until I started writing. In my early stuff, the most common critique I got was that the reader had no idea what any of the characters looked like, which made me realize that I had no idea what anyone looked like either, which was a problem. The most common piece of advice I got to remedy this was to go read other authors' work and see how they handled description. But after decades of description meaning nothing to me, I developed a tendency to automatically skip descriptive prose and only start paying attention when the dialogue started back up again. Right, thankfully, that's not the only way to improve writing description. Here's a few quick things you can do to tackle the issue of white room syndrome. Create a mood board to help you picture things. Mood boards are a collection of images, quotes, etc. that help evoke an image and feeling for whatever project you're working on. For writing, they can help you picture what a place or character looks like at a glance, and you can make them real easily with Campfire, Pinterest, or Canva. Remember your five senses. Consider not just what a character is seeing, but also what they hear, feel, smell, or taste. Just don't do all of that all of the time. Focus on what matters to the scene at hand. For example, if a character just walks into the kitchen, they're more likely to remark on the smell of food being cooked, not the sound of a dog barking in the yard. Unless that matters to the scene, I suppose. Reinforce themes or moods with the setting. The Great Gatsby did this magnificently with weather. As tensions rose, it became hotter and hotter. Everything comes to a climax on the hottest day of the year. My process is a bit different. First, I learned to use my world builder's disease. If I don't know what the character looks like, I just exhaustively detail their culture's looks and fashion until I have a solid base to build off of. Do that for every character in the narrative, and you're golden. However, I realize that this solution might only help the type of people who excessively world build, so let's move on. Momentum is also important to my writing process. Struggling to imagine what a newly introduced character looks like slows me down, so I added a description edit phase to my process. When a new person or place shows up in my rough draft, I'll just write describe in brackets and move on. 
Later on, I search for the word describe and add description in when I have time and energy. A word of warning, make sure you promptly address this issue as you go on. There's few things more grating than searching through a 200,000 word manuscript to find there are 29 undescribed characters milling around. Finally, my simplest and most practical piece of advice, just accept it. Not every story needs paragraphs of prose lovingly describing characters that will only be around for three chapters. Olsen is gone, so Excessive descriptions can also turn some readers off. So if you work best with leaner visuals, embrace it. White room syndrome can be a frustrating problem, but we all run into it at one point or another. There are lots of ways to circumvent it, from creating mood boards to just not describing anything until later. Find what works best for you and your project. Brett, thanks so much for joining us today. Before we close this out, don't you have a web serial coming out right now? I remember working on some maps with you. Yeah. It's called Under a Pirate Flag, and it's about a thief, a monk, a cursed blacksmith, and a bureaucrat who all get stuck on a pirate ship. It's currently being released on Campfire, as well as Royal Road, and there's several chapters released already. You can also find most of my books on my Amazon page under B.H. Pierce. Yeah, go check that out if you're a fan of fun, swashbuckling adventures. And as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>